So you just got your first drill or maybe you're thinking about getting your first drill, but you want to know more about how to use it before you get started. Well, this video is for you. We're going to go over all the functions and features of a drill and a hammer drill and show you how to drill the various types of holes that we do and drive screws with it. All right, so you notice I've got two different drills with me today and they're actually not technically drills. One is called a drill driver. It's got two functions, to drill holes and drive fasteners. The other is a hammer drill driver. It can drill holes in wood and metal and those kinds of things. It can also drill holes in concrete. That's the hammer drill function. And then of course it's got the driver function as well for those fasteners. So if we take a quick tour around the drill here, we got a few things going on. Now this is called the chuck on the front end and it can be made out of either all metal or it can sometimes have a plastic housing on it. And that's what's going to hold your bit. There are three teeth in here and depending on which direction you spin depends on whether it's opening or closing. So from behind the drill like this, if I turn it counterclockwise, the teeth are closing. And if I turn it clockwise, it's opening up. So if I want to put my drill bit in, I'm going to open it wide enough to accept it. And then I'm going to make sure that those three teeth are fully wrapped around on the center of the bit. If it's not, then that bit's gonna wobble a little bit more than it normally would. And I'll show you what that looks like. Now, most modern chucks are what we call ratcheting. So once you get it tightened, you'll hear it click over a little bit more. That's a ratcheting mechanism to make sure it's good and tight on that drill bit. So that's how the chuck works. When you're ready to drill, make sure it's good and tight. When you're done with it, or you're switching bits, just loosen it the other way. If you remember your dad's old drill, had a key on the bottom of it that you had to really rank on over here on the side. You don't have to do that anymore. The modern chucks are much better. So to make the drill bit spin, that's where the trigger comes into play. And most all of these are going to be variable speed triggers, which in other words means the harder you pull it, the faster it goes. So that gives you a lot of control over what you're doing. Now, I said something about wobble a minute ago in the chuck. And let's see if we can show you here. And most drills have a little bit of natural wobble in there, and that's called run out. Uh, better drills are going to be smoother and smoother, especially on the premium end. You'll see almost no run out on whatsoever. But if you see something like this, let's, let's intentionally put our drill bit in a little offset, because it is possible to do that when those teeth are open too far. This is kind of an extreme example. I would hope you, you would notice that something's wrong, but see how much different that is. And that's just an indication that we didn't get the bit in there centered right. Now, if you noticed on top of the drill, there's a switch up here. This is your gearbox switch, and most drills are going to have either one speed or two speeds on them. We have used drills that have three or four, and sometimes they've got electronic modes that offer even more options. So speed one is slower, and speed two is faster. But more speed does not equal more power. It's an inverse relationship on every drill. So in low speed, you're actually getting more power. And in high speed, you're getting less power. So it all depends on the type of application. For lighter duty tasks that don't require a ton of power, use high speed, and that'll let you drill faster. And when you've got a bigger bit like a hole saw, I'll show you how to use that in just a second, you're going to drop into your low gear so more of the drill's power can keep that bit rotating. Now, looking over more of the drill, you've sometimes got, depending on the model you have, sometimes there's a spot here or around the chuck, and that's to install a side handle. So in those high torque applications, the drill sometimes wants to twist on you, and that can hurt your wrist or your elbow. So you put that side handle on so you've got an extra spot to grip. And just behind that and above the trigger, you'll notice there's another switch here, and this is how you switch from forward to reverse. So when it, and you'll notice that most of the time right there on the switch, it'll give you some sort of direction arrow so you know which one's which, but you can just set it to one side, pull the trigger and see which direction it's going, and then flip it and see that it goes the other way. Now, most drills also have a position in the middle between those two. Don't get used very often, but a lot, some people do. And that middle position just locks out the trigger. So if you've got it in a tool bag and a bunch of other stuff in there, it's not going to accidentally pull and be spinning all the way to the job site or all the way to your mom's house or wherever you're headed. From there, on the bottom of the drill, you typically have an LED light. Some of them will have an LED light around the chuck, which is really nice, or just below the chuck. And then, of course, you've got a belt hook, and a lot of times that's reversible. And then you've got the battery. 
So before you start drilling, make sure that you charge your battery. Uh, they typically come with about half a charge on them. And if you're just doing some light duty stuff, you can get a lot of things accomplished on that half charge, but you'll get the best performance from a full battery and of course the longest run time on it. All right, so let's actually start drilling some stuff here. And we're gonna throw some safety glasses on. So what I've got installed right now is just a basic twist bit. This is a titanium coated one. That's what that gold color is on it. But there's cobalt ones, there's basic black oxide coated ones. They'll all do the trick, especially in wood. This is just some soft wood that we've got laying around. So when I'm drilling in wood, I wanna be in high speed. Okay, a drill bit like this, even a basic drill is gonna be able to go through this wood with this size bit in high speed. We wanna do that quickly. So when you're getting set up, one of the big things is in most cases you want to make sure that you're drilling as straight up and down as you can. You know, there are applications where you want to come in from the side and that takes some more control, but a lot of times we just want that hole straight through. So line it up, feel free to put a second hand on the drill or on the side handle if you're using that, but when I'm using a twist bit like this, just a second hand over the drill is fine. And that's just helping me stabilize everything and I can kind of sit back a little bit and make sure that that bit is as straight up and down as I can get it. Considering I've got a bad right eye, this ain't too bad. And then from there, if you want a slow start or a soft start, start by pulling the trigger slow. And then just ramp up as you go. If you're a lot more confident, just go ahead and pull that trigger all the way. You're not going to hurt anything. And you may have noticed I kept the drill going when I was pulling the bit back out. And that's helping to clear some of these little chips that were coming around and making sure that that bit comes back through the hole slowly. The edges of the bit cut into the wood. And so if you try to just push it through or pull it out, it sticks. So just keep that going. You don't have to switch it into reverse. Just keep it going and you'll come in and out just fine. Easy peasy. All right. So moving on to a bigger bit, this is called a spade bit or paddle bit. And it is for drilling larger holes, has all kinds of sizes, starting from about a quarter inch all the way up to about an inch and a half you can get these in. And this one in particular has a self-feeding tip. And that's what these threads are on the front. So once it gets started, those threads are gonna just pull this through and all I've gotta do is control the drill. So we'll see if this one's got enough power to drill in high speed. If not, we'll switch it into low speed and be able to finish it off. So again, same thing. I'm gonna put a second hand on the drill for control and for safety, because this bigger bit's gonna to wanna to grab more. And then I just wanna make sure that I'm as straight up and down as I can get. Okay, and you notice in high speed, it didn't have enough power to finish the drive. So I'm gonna back that out. I'm gonna flip this into low speed, and then I'm gonna continue my hole. And that's it. And now we've got a larger hole. If we need an even bigger hole, we can switch over to a self-feed bit, or in this case, a hole saw. So this is gonna drill a two inch hole for us. And this is gonna, instead of pulling all of the chips out, like we had before, this is actually gonna create a hole by cutting around it. So we're gonna have this puck looking thing in the middle. All right, so same thing. I'm gonna start in high speed. I don't think we're gonna be able to stay there. But if we feather the trigger, and by feathering the trigger what I mean is control how much pressure we're putting on it and how much speed we're giving it, we might be able to stay in high speed. It just depends on how much control we have. And I do see that I'm gonna go through a little knot here. <clears throat> and this does have a small self-feeding tip, so I'm guessing we're gonna end up dropping into low speed. Most definitely. All right, as you can see, that took quite a bit longer and you might have noticed that I was kind of rocking the bit or the drill sum as I was going. And that's just to help these chips clear from in between the teeth on the hole saw and to keep the teeth engaged. So that was also a much longer drilling process than we saw with these other bits that we used. And one thing that you want to keep in mind is that the longer you use a drill in these tougher situations, the more that heat is going to build up in the battery and the tool 
So if you've got a lot of holes like that that you've got to drill, be sure to give your drill some rest in between just to let it cool down a little bit. Most modern drills have really good thermal indicators in them and they'll shut themselves down before damage happens. But if you get the magic blue smoke, that's a really bad sign. Now one other thing we want to look at is the driver function. In other words, it's going to drive screws for us or you can use a nut setter and you can drive nuts, bolts, things like that as well. So the process is the same as far as putting your bit in there. You want to make sure that the bit is centered on the chuck and you're again listening for that ratcheting. And you can give the drill a twist and make sure that that bit's not wobbling really funky. And then you've got two choices. So if you keep it in drill mode, then the drill is going to give you all the power it has in whichever mode that you're drilling in. So fast speed with lower power or high power and lower speed, your choice. And you can feather the trigger for some control on there. So we'll leave it in that mode and see what happens. So I'm in high speed right now. And very similar to what we did before, most of the time you want to drive that screw as straight as possible. And the way to do that well is to barely pull the trigger and let that screw get started before you give it full speed. All right, lots of funky things going on there. So one thing, you might have heard that kind of, uh, not, not really a rattling sound, but you could hear the bit slipping. So when a Phillips bit and a Phillips head start slipping, that's called cam out. And that will either damage the fastener head, and you'll start to see the cross in here get more rounded, or it will start to damage the bit, and you'll see the bit get more rounded. Now, the way that you avoid that is to put as much constant pressure on there as possible, but this is an application where an impact driver might be a better choice for you. But let's take a look at these clutch settings. All right, so say I want to set this drywall screw and I want it to be dead flush or dead even with the top of my board here. I've got to experiment a little bit and figure out which setting is going to give it to me. So I'm going to start somewhere in the middle. This has 20 clutch settings on it, a couple more than 20. So I'm going to start at 10 and we'll just see how much power I get out of that. So if you can hear that noise, that's not a duck call, even though it kind of sounds like one. That's the clutch mechanism. It's slipping over the top of some little bearing looking things in there, and it's preventing me from driving this any, any further. Now, I don't know if you, how well you can see, but this is just barely above the top of the wood. So one more setting will probably let me get it flush. Mm, looks like I need two. That's pretty doggone close. And once I've done a couple of these screws and I'm confident that this is going to drive where I want them, then I can set that clutch where I like it and just go through a whole lot of screws. As long as the material doesn't change, it's going to give me roughly the same setting each time. If it didn't go far enough, just click up another setting or two until you find the one that you like. So that's a lot of information about how to use a drill, but we didn't cover everything. So if you still have questions, feel free to leave those in the comments below, along with any feedback that you have for us. If this video was helpful to you, please give us a like and consider subscribing to the channel while you're here. Now, if you like the drills that we use, these are from Heart Tools and you can find them at Walmart. That's all I got for you today. As always, thank you so much for watching.